Hello everybody, I'm Renocio, and today is the winter solstice. That means it's the shortest day of the year, which around here means our sunrise was at about 8 o'clock and our sunset's going to be at 4.30, so less than 9 hours of sun. Given that this is a very dark and slow time of year, especially after the rush of the holidays, I wanted to try something different today. I wanted to make a video reminder about all of the, the light and growth and change that'll be headed our way after this quieter time. Also, I just love plants and I want to show you my plants. I started filming this video last April, which was about the time our climate shows signs of defrosting. This here is the one area in the house that gets enough light to grow anything. We do, however, have a decently sized balcony that I was determined to fill with greenery by summer's end. It's concrete and steel, so it's not very pretty to look at, although we did have intentions to decorate it, but then, you know, the pandemic hit, so that didn't happen. <laughs> I might have jumped the gun a little bit and put any plants that I thought would be cold tolerant outside before it was really a good time to do that. <laughs> M. I. Gardener here on YouTube suggested planting cold tolerant vegetables like the peas that I had or the blue jay bush beans as soon as the difference in temperature from day to night was less than 10 degrees. Granted, he was measuring in Fahrenheit, but I, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> I also direct seeded some greens, things like kale and chard. I did get a few little baby shoots coming up, but because of the heavy rainfall and high winds at our floor, many of them were getting uprooted or growing in weird directions. Likewise, the dirt I had in the planters was being washed and blown right off, exposing the seeds. Like, get back in there! Since the beans weren't staying in place long enough to properly germinate, I tried wrapping a bunch in a wet paper towel and letting them sit in a glass jar in the window. This was both a good and a bad idea, since it did help some of them sprout, but it made the rest rot. <laughs> Around this time, I figured direct sowing wasn't going to be the right way to handle my balcony garden, so I turned to this click and grow smart garden that Bee got me for Christmas. It's meant to use these specific wastefully prepackaged pods, but I just scooped regular dirt and my starter beans in and it worked just fine. The established baby plants handled the outdoors way better, and once the rains calmed down, the lettuces came up too. The next thing I wanted to try was kind of a long shot, but I had a couple of potatoes growing eyes and I was curious if I could use them as sprouts, so I set them in the sun to sprout further. Because here in Nova Scotia we get such a limited season of heat and direct sunlight, I started my tomatoes really early. I have a collection of varieties I've been saving seeds from, but decided to use my oldest ones first. I planted three to four seeds in each of these coffee cups I'd been snagging from the trash at work, and I found that the clear cold drink containers seem to work better overall, probably because the sunlight can heat the roots as well as the plant's leaves. I planted two varieties of tomatoes and tried jalapenos, but that didn't work. And at this point, also started up some calendula and cornflower to attract pollinators. They all took up residence at my desk in the sun, and I huddled the cups close to the grow light during the evening to take advantage of the extra UV exposure. As the tomatoes started growing larger and the weather got warmer, I'd set them up in front of the screen door. That way they could adjust to direct sunlight instead of sun through the glass and they could be jostled by the wind so they'd grow strong stalks. After a while I set them up in a cardboard box like a little litter of kittens to enjoy the outside fully. Look how cute they are! I did periodically have new tiny sprouts pop up, but I just pulled those out so the established plant wouldn't have any competition. My calendula was having the same problem as the lettuce did early on, so I started growing that in the click and grow as well to much better results. I also planted my potatoes. I cut them into chunks, each with a few eyes, and weighed the dirt down with this extra pot because it kept blowing away. <laughs> I was so surprised and delighted to see them growing actual leaves. I hadn't expected that. 
The last kind of leafy baby I started growing were cukes and zucchini, the latter of which I mostly planted at a larger garden elsewhere. Uh, timing when to plant these guys was a little tricky, but I figured if the tomatoes were happy, these guys would probably be okay. I think next time I'll give the potatoes their own bin entirely, but I was surprised at how well they got along with the orca beans. There was a little bit of crowding, but both made do with the space they had. Likewise, once the lettuces started dying off, I planted green onions alongside the peas and they got on fine. I was so excited seeing the first few flowers appear on the beans and the peas. They had such pretty colors! I divvied the tomatoes up once they seemed to be too big for their pots. Most of them went to a bigger garden space outside the city, but I kept one of each type on my balcony just to see how they'd fare. I staked them up with some sticks and made sure to pluck off any sucker growths that might take energy away from the fruit. The leaves had such a gorgeous color gradient. and I made sure to flick the flowers often to make sure they were being pollinated. But we did have a fascinating variety of pollinators come to the deck too, including this gorgeous little honeybee! After having planted all I was going to, it was mostly a matter of maintenance and watching my hard work pay off. It's so incredible what simple ingredients will do. With sun, water, and earth, even this concrete space can be made organic. This is what appeals to me about gardening more than anything. The idea that with a little ingenuity, any space can be made into a green one. I'd love to see more places in the city sprinkled with plant life because there's definitely space for it. By the time June rolled around, my cucumbers were beginning to flower and make these little baby cukes, and the tomatoes were making tiny tomatoes! The beans and peas were throwing out fruit like crazy and were such satisfying little snacks. By this point, my flowers were starting to flower too. <laughs> the corn flower was a pollinator favorite and the petals are edible, so every few days I'd go out and pluck them off. I left the flower heads themselves though because I wanted to have seeds to save at the end of the season. I got all sorts of colors springing up. Deep blues, royal purples, soft pinks, and even white ones. The calendula, another edible and medicinal plant, was also putting up flowers like crazy. I, I must have gotten hundreds of flowers from the few little pots of it I grew. It was unbelievable. It and the catnip that I grew from seed were both super prone to aphids though, so I had to spray them every few days with a dish soap and water mix. I had a constant parchment paper set up in the window that I was using to dry petals and leaves, and I was adding new material every day. July and August saw us hit with a couple of heat waves, which are now kind of a seasonal thing around here, and my poor plants just could not handle the constant strain. Because they were in pots, no amount of watering could keep them from drying out. The cukes grew in small and the tomatoes suffered blossom end rot. 
the plants I had out in a larger garden in deeper soil were able to hang on. Once the heat ebbed though, my balcony tomatoes came back too. By the time the late summer heat rolls around, any lettuce that you haven't harvested is gonna flower, and I chose to let these mustards blossom because the bright yellow blooms were really attractive to the bees. I love watching them wiggle in the breeze. As the autumn came closer, seed pods grew in the flower's place, which I let grow plump and dry out before harvesting. Crinkling the seeds free is a very zen task, although they do tend to go flying everywhere. We nibbled on the blue jay beans as they grew, but the other bush bean I had growing were orcas, which are gorgeous black and white dry beans meant for cooking. I likewise let them dry on the vine and then cracked them open when they'd gone brown. Aren't they just stunning? And if you were wondering about the potatoes, they did grow. I harvested a whole five tiny little friends. <laughs> Growing your own food is so rewarding, and though every winter I get sad and wistful about the never-ending cold and dark, it helps to look back on all that flourished and all the potential the new year can hold. I know this is a little bit different from what I normally do, but thank you for sticking in there if you got this far, and if you'd like to see more of this or more of my art and stuff in general, please let me know with a like or a comment or something to that effect, and you can hang out and see more of it in the future by stubby screeding. <laughs> A lot of the things I got from my garden I kind of had to eat right away, but many of these I dried for winter tea and for seasoning. There's still a lot of months before I can start this cycle again, but the solstice marks the beginning of that, with that slow return of the sun. I hope you all can find something bright to look forward to as well, and I wish you the happiest of solstices and a safe and a relaxing December. Hey, you want to come in or something? Excuse you? Hey. What are you doing? <laughs> what?